It's Game Boy World, and this travesty is Castlevania The Adventure. If Revenge of the Gator turned out to be the most surprisingly excellent Game Boy release to date, here we have the most devastating disappointment so far, Konami's Castlevania The Adventure. It's the unlucky number 13 release for Game Boy. Released at the pinnacle of Castlevania's classic 8-bit run, it predates the Japanese release of Castlevania 3 by a matter of weeks. Castlevania The Adventure should have been a smash hit. Six months into the Game Boy's life and Konami makes its debut with a wholly original spin-off to what was arguably its greatest NES success. What could possibly go wrong? Unfortunately, the adventure clearly wasn't produced by the core Castlevania team. Thanks to Konami's irritating habit of failing to credit its designers back in the day, we don't actually know the names of the people who programmed and directed the adventure, or if it was even developed internally. The only clue that this was an in-house project at Konami comes from its music credits, which have come to light thanks to the company's extensive CD reissues, where credits are more a matter of obligation. The game's trio of composers, Shigeru Fukutake, Norio Hanzawa, and Hidehiro Funauchi, collectively worked on dozens of Konami titles. Hanzawa was even part of the team that left in the early 90s to form Treasure, but none of them worked on any of the NES Castlevania games, or in fact on any games in the series outside of the adventure and its sequel Belmont's Revenge. Given this game's close proximity to the ambitious Castlevania 3, it's probably unrealistic to expect it to have come from the same team. They were busy making one of the greatest NES games of all time, after all. Unfortunately, whoever Konami did assign to create Castlevania's first portable outing clearly didn't really get the series. Castlevania The Adventure looks and sounds the part, but it's a failure of design from start to finish. In fairness, even at the time, history had proven that Castlevania is really hard to get right. The NES game launched around the same time as a remarkably similar MSX take on the concept, but that didn't work nearly as well. Castlevania 2 tried to go big and fell on its face, and the less said about Haunted Castle, the better. Still, Castlevania The Adventure feels like it's trapped in its own special kind of hell. Simon's Quest at least stumbled for its insane ambition, and Haunted Castle was just straight up awful. Castlevania The Adventure fails in subtle ways with such slight missteps that you can see how it could have been great. It's maddening for a near brush with success. For starters, the controls feel just off enough to detract from the playability. The Belmont clan has never been known for its nimble foot speed, but protagonist Christopher Belmont moves about half as fast as his relatives. It's not just that he walks too slowly, all his actions feel equally sluggish. He's slow to respond to commands, and he attacks much too sluggishly. Christopher's jumping physics are even worse. His arc doesn't carry him forward quite as much as some in Belmont's on NES, and many of the game's jumping sequences degenerate into maddening exercises in pixel precision. This alone is enough to peg Castlevania the Adventure as a sad Castlevania impersonator. Whatever flaws the NES games may have featured, their control mechanics were spot on. Simon moved in a limited but consistent and functional fashion, and the entire game world was constructed with both his capabilities and limitations in mind. Not so for Christopher. Not only does he control awkwardly, most of the game's difficulty comes from the fact that the level designs and enemy placements appear to have been crafted for a far more capable protagonist. Particularly frustrating are sequences like the clusters of bats that hover above and move erratically toward Christopher. Because of his slow response and follow through time, he is as likely as not to be hit by a bat, with players completely at the mercy of the AI's whims. If the bats hover above, great, but if they randomly decide to swoop low, you'll be unable to respond in time. Castlevania The Adventure doesn't offer any sub-weapons like the cross or holy water. Instead, you collect whip extensions, a second of which allows you to fire a projectile from the tip of the weapon. Infuriatingly though, Christopher's whip uses the same power down system as Jason's gun in Blaster Master. Every time you take damage, the whip downgrades in power. Lacking sub-weapons and therefore the need for related paraphernalia, Christopher's pickups are limited to coins for points, whip upgrades, hearts for health recovery, and crosses for invincibility. The frequency with which health recovery items and invincibility crosses appear throw the game's failures of level design into sharp relief. Fairly early on in level 1, you're forced to climb a series of ropes, the game's replacement for traditional staircases, as giant exploding eyeballs drop from above. Because you're helpless as you climb, the game gives you invincibility potions to allow you to make these climbs unharmed. But this seems like a lazy substitute for simply designing the levels more intelligently. Instead of placing players in a situation where they're unable to avoid harm, except through temporary invincibility, why not take a more fair approach that gives them a sense of agency, allowing them to avoid hazards through skill? But then, perhaps that's too steep an expectation for this game, whose controls often prove to be completely unresponsive. Castlevania lived and died on NES by its quick, precise actions, but here you'll frequently take a hit, or miss a jump because the game simply didn't register your input in time. Castlevania The Adventure isn't an abject failure, Konami's tradition of quality manages to polish this turd to a mirror sheen. The visuals look stunning given the platform's limitations, authentically Castlevania, and the music proves the Game Boy's audio chops were equal to those of any dedicated console in the right hands. It even manages to harness its unique mechanics to some clever ends. A particularly entertaining sequence in the second level pits you against more of those eyeballs rolling along a bridge, 
The twist, when the eyeballs explode, they take out a section of the bridge, forcing you to choose between evasion and destruction. But for the most part, Castlevania the Adventure simply isn't much fun to play. Between the awful controls and the sloppy level design, it's very much an exercise in rote memorization with just enough randomness to instill added frustration at every turn. No doubt the extremely lopsided difficulty comes from a desire to pad the game. At a mere four levels in length, Castlevania the Adventure would be the shortest entry in the series if you could play through it as smoothly as you can the original Castlevania. But since every inch of progress you make feels like a hard-fought victory against unfair odds, and you have limited continues, there's little likelihood of players breezing through this one in a single sitting. Back in the day, no upcoming release for Game Boy filled me with a desire to own the system nearly as much as Castlevania the Adventure. But then I borrowed it from a friend and discovered the dark truth. Castlevania the Adventure was so bad that I ended up not owning a Game Boy for years. And it's just as unenjoyable 25 years later as it was at the time. Thankfully, the sequel would prove to be far better, and Koji Igarashi and developer M2 would inexplicably redeem this mess with Castlevania the Adventure Rebirth for WiiWare. But the original Game Boy release? Best forgotten. For more tearfully terrible takes on your favorite NES games, keep reading GameBoyWorld.com.